Previously on Dragon Ball Shinken, Vegeta got a destruction and old Goku started a completely surreal battle, a fight that caused a lot of concern even for Beerus and Whis. It even impressed Beerus a lot, as he couldn't imagine the two Saiyans had become so powerful in the 30 years he was sleeping. In a clash of attacks, Goku and Vegeta disappeared from Beerus and Whis's sight, and then reappeared on Beerus's planet again. But something was very wrong. Beerus and Whis simply didn't recognize them, and the God of Destruction started threatening them, preparing to kill both. What will happen? Why are Beerus and Whis acting this way? How will Goku and Vegeta survive Beerus? Find out now. Hawkeye. With his hand pointed at Goku and Vegeta gathering a great amount of destruction energy, Beerus asks who they are and what they want on his planet. Goku and Vegeta are very surprised by this, but Goku starts to think that Beerus is joking and tries to approach him with a smile and a relaxed tone, but Beerus proves he wasn't joking by firing all the energy in the form of a small power sphere. Goku dodges it while getting a big scare, and after avoiding the attack, he sees the small power sphere pass right through him, move away from the planet, and disappear in a massive explosion in the sky that shakes the entire planet. At that moment, Goku realized that Beerus is truly serious, and he screams in fear because the God of Destruction really tried to kill him. Vegeta asks Beerus and Whis what is happening, and tells them that they are Goku and Vegeta, their disciples, but the Destroyer and the Angel seem to have no idea what they're talking about. Whis says that he hasn't had a student since Beerus himself, and Beerus never had a disciple. Noticing Vegeta's attire more closely, Beerus asks why he's dressed like a god of destruction, and at that moment he comically gets angry, creating a theory in his mind, and coming to the conclusion that Vegeta is there to try to take his position. Vegeta comically gets scared when the god of destruction suggests that and tries to say that's not what's happening. But before he could explain the situation, Beerus is already in front of him, hitting him with a very strong punch to the abdomen. A punch so strong that it immediately leaves Vegeta out of breath, while letting his saliva come out of his mouth. After the punch to the abdomen, Beerus lands another one right on Vegeta's face, sending the Saiyan Prince high up in the sky and making him disappear. Goku comically gets scared and also tries to approach Beerus and tells him that things are not as he is thinking. But without even responding or letting him speak, Beerus points his hand and unleashes a massive wave of power against Goku, which would hit him right in the head. But he comically dodges it by throwing his body backward to the point of hitting his head on the ground. After the wave of power passes over him, Goku stands up in great fear and complains to the destroyers saying that the attack was launched with the intent to kill him. Beerus says that's obvious since killing them is his intention because he was sleeping and was awakened by the noise made by these two, so they will pay with their lives for it. Beerus charges towards Goku and attempts an attack, but Goku dodges and goes up into the sky. The God of Destruction pursues him with many other attacks, all of which Goku comically dodges while trying to explain to Beerus that they don't want to harm him. Beerus gets very irritated that Goku is dodging his blows and tells him to stand still. While this is happening, Whis watches very attentively, surprised that Goku is dodging Beerus's attacks and realizing that it's not normal. Whis realizes that despite Goku looking like an idiot, he certainly isn't one. At one point, Beerus tries to punch Goku, and seeing that the blow would actually hit him, Goku defends himself by gently deflecting Beerus's arm and making a move that causes the God of Destruction to pass right through him, spinning several times in the air and heading towards the ground. Before crashing into the ground, Beerus manages to regain control of his body and land, but he is very angry about what just happened. After Goku's move, Whis is completely impressed, and he tells Beerus that he'd better take this fight seriously seriously and not underestimate his opponent because Goku is using Ultra Instinct. Beerus is shocked by these words and asks Whis if he's sure about what he's saying. Whis says yes and that he had been suspecting it from the beginning, but after seeing Goku's last move, he's certain. Goku says that Whis is as sharp as ever and confirms the angel's suspicions, saying that he is indeed using Ultra Instinct. After so many years of training, Goku managed to learn what he was training in the Granola Arc, which is to use Ultra Instinct fully as a technique without the need to transform. Whis asks how Goku learned Ultra Instinct and he replies that it was Whis himself who taught him. But before they could continue the conversation, they see a flash of energy approaching through the sky at high speed. And this energy is not just any energy, but the purple energy of destruction, who's approaching is Vegeta, who has transformed into Ultra Ego and goes straight towards the God of Destruction, shocking Beerus completely. The shock is so great that Beerus can't even react. And then he's hit by a flying kick from Vegeta that sends him to the other side of the planet, leaving behind a gigantic trail of destruction on the ground. 
Goku becomes desperate with Vegeta's reaction and tells him that they should be trying to convince the two instead of starting a real fight. But Vegeta says he doesn't care. Beerus really hurt him with those attacks, and no one hits him like that and gets away with it. On the other side of the planet, a large pillar of purple energy can be seen in the distance, and floating out of that energy is the God of Destruction of the Universe 7, surrounded by an aura of destructive energy and with a furious expression. Beerus flies out from where he was, and in a split second returns to where Vegeta is, landing on the ground with such force that it creates a hole around the area of impact. Furious, he asks how Vegeta is able to use that power. At first he thought Vegeta was a fake wearing that God of Destruction outfit, but he seems that's not the case. On the other hand, Vegeta can't be the god of another universe since Beerus knows them all. He asks who Vegeta really is. Vegeta responds that it was Beerus himself who taught him the technique and that he is the god of destruction of Universe 7. Beerus laughs and says that Vegeta must be crazy. It's as was said, he never had a disciple and he has no intention of having one. Beerus also states that he is the god of Universe 7 and doesn't intend to give that position to anyone. Beerus increases the intensity of his power aura and Vegeta does the same. They stare at each other with determination as their intense auras envelop the entire battlefield. Goku was about to ask Vegeta to not fight again, but he didn't have time to do so because Vegeta lunged forward with a quick push towards the God of Destruction. However, Beerus skillfully dodged, demonstrating his feline agility. He retaliated with a series of swift kicks. Vegeta was hit by the first few kicks, but managed to block the rest and counterattack with a powerful elbow strike to Beerus' chin, making him recoil. But Beerus quickly recovered, and they continued their exchange of blows. The fight continued with both combatants displaying great strength, speed, and skill a battle worthy of two martial arts masters. Due to the more aggressive nature of his Ultra Ego, Vegeta focused on a more offensive tactic, investing in brutal attacks and not caring about taking some hits from his opponent to create an opening. Beerus, on the other hand, employed a more balanced approach, attempting precise and swift strikes while evading the enemy's attacks with agility. However, despite this smoother strategy, the Destroyer didn't shy away from employing force and violence in his blows. Each movement was calculated and executed masterfully, maintaining the balance between them. Goku noticed that despite using the power of destruction to inflict greater damage, Beerus also seemed to be utilizing Ultra Instinct in his movements, which were incredibly fluid and precise. Goku remembered that during the exhibition match against the other gods of destruction, Beerus employed a similar tactic effectively handling the attacks of the other gods while also delivering powerful strikes. However, Goku compared the two instances and concluded that Beerus seemed to be executing it much better now, as if he had trained extensively to balance these two concepts. The planet of Beerus trembled under the intensity of the confrontation, and with each collision of the two gods of destruction's attacks, there were climatic anomalies like earthquakes, gusts of wind, and lightning. Despite Vegeta's fierce resistance, Beerus began to gain a slight edge in the fight. With his smooth and precise movements, Beerus landed some impactful strikes in the right place, shaking the Saiyan Prince. But Vegeta seemed to feed off the pain from the blows, further strengthening his combat instinct and consequently his body. With his vigor increased, he began to outshine Beerus, pressing him and landing some powerful attacks on the Cat God as well. At one point, Vegeta was about to deliver a strong punch to Beerus, which would undoubtedly cause a great deal of pain. But Beerus prevented the blow by pointing his hand at Vegeta and firing a massive wave of energy at point-blank rage, pushing him away. Infuriated, Vegeta began shooting multiple energy blasts at Beerus, who skillfully evaded by maneuvering through the air with agility, responding with the same type of attack. Beerus and Vegeta engaged in a true shootout of key blasts, creating explosions and shockwaves that shook the planet. Multiple explosions scattered across the sky of Beerus' planet as they skillfully dodged attacks and countered with increasingly powerful techniques. The battle turned into a spectacle of light and power as Vegeta and Beerus unleashed a relentless sequence of attacks. Vegeta decided to change attacks and unleashed a powerful Gallic gun while Beerus retaliated with a devastating energy sphere. The collision of the two powers created an explosion that made all the previous explosions seem like nothing. After the Gallic Gun, the Saiyan decided to resort to an even more powerful technique, concentrating a tremendous amount of power and unleashing his final flash, releasing a massive torrent of energy towards Beerus, who responded with a colossal destruction sphere. Seeing what was about to happen, Whis created a force field around himself, while Goku immediately used instant transmission. The collision of the attacks was so violent that it created an extraordinary explosion of energy, obliterating the entire surface of the planet. After the catastrophic explosion, Whis felt safe enough to dispel his force field, and Goku, who had teleported away to escape the blast, returned to the planet relieved. Beerus and Vegeta finally paused for a moment, panting as they locked eyes. Beerus smiled and admitted that Vegeta was no ordinary warrior, and indeed he possessed enough power to be a true god of destruction. Vegeta replied that he already was one, 
but it still felt good for his pride to hear such praise from someone like Beerus. The two were about to continue, but then Whis shouted for Beerus to look at his planet. Only now did Beerus see the devastation that had occurred, and he was shocked to realize that his entire planet lay in ruins. He grew furious and yelled at Vegeta, saying that he would pay for what he had forced him to do. Vegeta retorted that Beerus had no right to complain since he had been the one responsible for the destruction of his planet in the past. But at that moment, Goku surprised everyone by arriving behind Vegeta, touching his shoulder and then teleporting them away. Beerus grew furious and asked Whis where they had gone, but Whis simply gestured, indicating that he didn't know. Goku and Vegeta were teleported to a desolate planet. Vegeta asked Goku where he had taken them and Goku replied that he had sent some energy there and brought them to that location. Apparently, there was no intelligent life on this planet, but Goku must have sensed the key of some animal or insect, which in his current state of developing his ability to sense key was enough. Vegeta was very angry as he reverted to his base form. He asked why Kakarot had prevented him from continuing the fight. Goku said that he and Beerus were taking the fight too seriously, and they should be focused on finding out what had happened, not killing their friends. Vegeta said that he was going to kill Beerus just to teach him a lesson, but Goku argued that there was no way for him to know that. For some reason, this Beerus seemed different from the one they knew. This Beerus seemed more evolved, and Goku was sure that he hadn't been using his full power in that fight. If he and Vegeta continued fighting, they would take it more and more seriously and reach the point of killing each other or destroying the entire universe. Goku jokingly said that Vegeta and Beerus were quite similar, both very temperamental and prideful, always taking things too seriously. Vegeta reluctantly agreed with Goku and said that this Beerus he had just faced was different from the Beerus he knew. This Beerus didn't just use enough power in that fight to surpass the full power of the Beerus he knew, so he couldn't say if he was stronger or not, but what he could say for sure was that he had a much more refined fighting technique. Vegeta remarked that it felt as if Beerus he knew was a rusty version compared to the Beerus he had just faced. Goku suggested that if this Beerus had improved his combat techniques compared to the Beerus they knew, it might be because he had time to do so. This could mean that they had somehow been transported to the future. Vegeta said that couldn't be the case because if this were a future version of Beerus, he would still know them. But Vegeta agreed with Goku that they might be in some parallel timeline, such as Trunks' timeline. Goku said they could go to Earth as there they would have a better understanding of things. Vegeta agreed and said it was a good idea. Goku and Vegeta focused for a moment, identifying the location of planet Earth and then teleported themselves there. Goku and Vegeta arrived on planet Earth, specifically at Capsule Corporation. Looking around, they noticed that Capsule Corporation doesn't seem different from what they know, but they see something that leaves them both in extreme shock. Walking through the garden of Capsule Corporation are Yamcha and Bulma, and that's not all. They are embracing each other like a couple. Upon seeing this, Vegeta is completely paralyzed for a moment, appearing not to be alive anymore. But in the next moment, the life of the Saiyan Prince returns, erupting in a burst of fury as he screams at Yamcha with all his might to get his hands off his Bulma. His voice is so piercing that it makes the entire place tremble. Yamcha and Bulma are taken aback as they hadn't noticed that there were other people there. Yamcha and Bulma ask who they are, but it's Vegeta who wants to ask the questions. He wants to know why the hell they are together like that. Yamcha says that Bulma is his wife, and this is their house, and he also says that they are the ones in the wrong in this situation, so they shouldn't be asking questions. Upon hearing that Yamcha and Bulma are a couple, Goku and Vegeta are even more surprised, and Vegeta's anger seems to increase as well. He tells Yamcha to get away from his wife, or he'll make him disappear in an instant. Goku pleads with Vegeta to calm down, but he refuses to do so. He only wants to kill the bastard. Yamcha displays a proud smile, and while puffing up his chest in a posture of superiority, says that they have no idea who they're talking to. He says they are talking to Yamcha, one of the great heroes of Earth. Vegeta says that Yamcha is a hero only in hell, which is where he will send him now. Without hesitation, he fires an energy blast at Yamcha, who is caught off guard by the sudden attack. But before a tragedy occurs, Goku points one hand at the energy spear and then points the other to the sky. As he does this, Vegeta's energy vanishes from there, only to reappear in the sky and finally explode. The power of the explosion shakes the entire place, leaving Yamcha and Bulma completely frightened. Goku scolds Vegeta saying that he would have destroyed the entire Capsule Corporation with that, and even killed Bulma. Vegeta appears remorseful for what he has done, but justifies it by saying that he simply couldn't hold back his rage. Yamcha says that they will pay for that, and then begins to concentrate his power as he releases an aura of energy. Goku and Vegeta are surprised because they realize that Yamcha's power is truly immense compared to what they know. Goku asks how Yamcha became so powerful, and he responds by saying that he warned them not to provoke him, and then he threatens the two, saying that they will pay for invading his house like that. Yamcha says he will start with Vegeta and charges at him in a low flight, 
saying that he will claim his life. But Goku quickly resolves the situation by moving behind Yamcha with enough speed that he doesn't even have time to react, and knocks him out with a gentle blow to the neck. Seeing her husband being defeated so effortlessly, Bulma becomes completely terrified and asks how he did it. Goku jokes and says that despite this Yamcha may be thousands of times more powerful than the one they know, he still doesn't compare to them. Goku also says that he had to do it for his own safety, as Vegeta would have surely torn the guy to shreds if Yamcha had gotten any closer. After justifying himself, Goku asks Bulma if they can talk now, and she has no choice but to agree. After what happened, Bulma called the other Earth warriors and asked them to come to her house. A short time later, they were all there, gathered around a large table in the garden. In addition to Goku, Vegeta, Bulma, and Yamcha, Krillin, Tien, and Piccolo were also present. Goku and Vegeta explain the situation to everyone, telling them that they apparently came from a parallel timeline, but in this world things are different. After explaining their story to everyone, they asked the others to tell them what had happened on Earth in their absence. In this world, Goku never arrived on planet Earth, so they had no knowledge of his existence. In this world, Bulma also went after the Dragon Balls. On that journey, she met Yamcha and they fell in love and eventually got married. Goku asks how she obtained the four-star Dragon Ball if he wasn't there to give it to her, and she explains that Son Gohan was very kind and gave her the Dragon Ball. Goku then remembers that he was the one who killed his grandfather, so if he had never come to Earth, Son Gohan would be alive at the time Bulma went after the Dragon Balls. Bulma says that in this world, Son Gohan died just a few years ago, and his death was natural due to old age. In this world, Krillin also became a disciple of Master Roshi, and they participated in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament, in which Master Roshi disguised himself as Jackie Chun and became the champion. The Red Ribbon Army also attempted to dominate the world and came very close to succeeding, but Master Master Roshi, Krillin, and Yamcha join forces to put an end to the evil organization. Sometime later, the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament took place, and Tien was the winner. But he was convinced by Master Roshi to become a better person and gave up his plans of becoming an assassin. After the tournament, King Piccolo and his minions initiated their plans, and they even killed Krillin, Chiaotzu, and Master Roshi. But Yamcha and Tien trained hard, and they had the help of Son Gohan who wanted to fight despite being retired because he wanted to avenge his master's death. While Yamcha and Son Gohan dealt with Piccolo's minions, Tien managed to defeat the Great Demon King with the Mafuba, which he learned from watching Master Roshi. A few years later, King Piccolo's son appeared in the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament, but Kamisama, foreseeing this, called Tien, Yamcha, and Krillin to train on the Celestial Platform a few years earlier. When Piccolo Jr. arrived to face them, the three joined forces and defeated him. Goku asks how Piccolo survived the fight since, in his world, it was he who spared his life. Piccolo explains that the Earth Warriors didn't want to kill him at that time because they didn't want Kamisama to die as well. However, after after he was defeated in the tournament, Kami-sama used the Mafuba to seal him, and they kept him in prison for many years. Vegeta asks if they encountered any Saiyans in this world, and they responded that they didn't. Vegeta expected the answer as if Goku never arrived on Earth. It's probably because he wasn't sent there, so Raditz had no reason to come to that planet, and consequently neither did he or Nappa. Knowing that the Saiyans didn't appear in this world, Goku concluded that they probably didn't go to Namek either, since the reason they went there is his world was to resurrect their fallen comrades from the Saiyan invasion. They confirm Goku's suspicions, saying that they never went to a place called Namek. Goku asks if they had any trouble with androids, and they reply that they did. They explain that long after they destroyed the Red Ribbon Army, a remnant of that organization named Dr. Gero created incredibly powerful androids to defeat them. Vegeta asks how they managed to defeat these androids, since in their world, the Saiyans were crucial to that victory. They explain that when the androids attacked and they realized they wouldn't be able to defeat them, Kamisama told them about the hyperbolic time chamber, and they all trained there for many days, which amounted to many years. Even with all that training, they still wouldn't be able to surpass the androids, but Kamisama decided to sacrifice his own individuality and merge with Piccolo, and their power increased tremendously. Up until that point, Piccolo was trapped, but he was freed for this purpose. With Kami-sama residing within him, he retained his consciousness, but also inherited some of Kami's calmer personality. Piccolo became powerful enough to face the androids, so the others only supported him in battle. With everyone's combined efforts, they managed to defeat androids 17 and 18. Goku says that it doesn't make sense, because if Piccolo never went to Namek in this world, he shouldn't have been able to defeat androids 17 and 18. He wouldn't have had increased his power by merging with Nail, so fusing with Kami alone wouldn't have been enough to match the androids. But Vegeta reminds Goku that in Trunks' future, androids 17 and 18 were much weaker than in their timeline. Perhaps that's also the case in this world. 
and maybe they are even weaker than the androids in Trunks' future. Because without Goku's existence in this world, things followed a different path. Dr. Gero created androids strong enough to defeat the Earthlings, not someone stronger like Goku. After hearing Vegeta's theory, Goku agrees. Goku mentions that in his world, Krillin married Android 18 and asks why it didn't happen in this world. Krillin disdainfully replies that he would never marry someone like her because she was too evil. Vegeta has a big question, which is how they dealt with Majin Buu since he was extremely powerful by the standards of that time, and his power was far beyond the reach of Piccolo or any Earthling. They explain that sometime before Majin Buu arrived, the Supreme Kai arrived on Earth and warned them about Babidi's plans, so they were taken to the Supreme Kai's planet to train. There, an ancient Kaioshin was called upon to assist in their training. This elderly deity performed a ritual to unlock their hidden potential, making them incredibly more powerful. Among them, Piccolo became the strongest and even learned how to change his form. Goku says that this old Kaioshin was trapped inside the Z-Sword and asks if they also broke the sword like Gohan did. But they say that there was no Kaioshin trapped inside any sword. He was just living normally. Goku and Vegeta concluded that in this world, Beerus never sealed the old Kaioshin inside a sword. The others continue telling their story, mentioning that after the events involving Babidi, the Earth has been at peace for all these years. However, they never stop training because they never know when the next danger might arise. Goku and Vegeta ponders over this and concludes that it makes sense that nothing else happened on this planet. If the Saiyans weren't on Earth, Beerus, Frieza, and Moro wouldn't have gone there. And Universe 7 wouldn't have been erased during the Tournament of Power either, because the tournament only happened because Goku brought the future's Zeno to their timeline, and it was from his conversation with the two Zenos that the idea of the tournament arose. Goku asks if two androids named Gamma 1 and 2 cause trouble on the planet, but they say no. At that moment, Vegeta realizes that these events haven't happened yet in this timeline, and maybe they never will. They were told that an android named Cell Max was created while they were away from Earth, but in this world, Cell never Never even came into existence. Despite all the explanations they received from the Earth Warriors, Goku and Vegeta are still very curious. They wonder what Frieza is up to and why Goku wasn't sent to that planet. Vegeta says that Goku was sent to Earth during the destruction of planet Vegeta. If he didn't arrive, it means he either died during the planet's destruction or the planet wasn't destroyed. They are eager to know what happened, so Vegeta suggests they go there. Since he knows the planet's location, Vegeta uses instant transmission to take them there. When the two visitors suddenly vanish from the table, everyone present is left speechless, as they left just as randomly randomly as they arrived. A comedic, confusing, and awkward silence remains for everyone there. Goku and Vegeta teleport to the location of planet Vegeta, and to their surprise, the planet is still there. Vegeta smiles upon seeing his home planet and says he thought he would never see that place again in his life. Goku says he also never thought he would visit that place someday, and then asks Vegeta what might have happened for the planet to still exist in this world. Vegeta naturally concludes that Frieza didn't destroy the planet for some reason. Perhaps he doesn't exist in this world, or maybe someone defeated him in the past. He says to find the answer, they must meet their own versions in this world, or maybe his father. But before they could do that, they noticed a group of people approaching at high speed. It's a group of Saiyan warriors. The group of soldiers reaches and surrounds them. They say their radars detected two sudden arrivals on the planet, and they came to investigate. Vegeta senses the key of the soldiers, and is surprised to find that their power levels are much higher than the average power level of a Saiyan soldier in their world. He says each of these men is more powerful than he was when he attacked Earth, and at that time, he was already stronger than any Saiyan he knew before the destruction of planet Vegeta. He wonders why the Saiyans in this world are so strong. The Saiyan soldiers obviously notice their appearances and are perplexed by the resemblance of the two with King Vegeta and Kakarot. With their words, Goku and Vegeta realize that in this world, Vegeta is the king of the planet and Kakarot is apparently a well-known figure. But despite recognizing their faces, the soldiers are not friendly and say that they cannot be King Vegeta or Kakarot because both of them were in the king's castle. They were the ones who detected the invasion on the radar and ordered the invaders to be captured. In other words, these two standing before them can only be imposters. Vegeta is irritated by being called an imposter but tries to ignore it and asks to be taken to the king for a conversation. But the soldiers say he is not in a position to give orders and that they will only take them to the king after they have broken a few bones. Vegeta tells these worms to know their place and flicks the air, and with just the pressure from Vegeta's flick, one of the Saiyan soldiers is knocked out, leaving the others extremely impressed. The soldiers become angry, and realizing that these two individuals are strong, they say they will use their full power. After they declare that, much to Goku and Vegeta's complete shock, all the surrounding Saiyan soldiers transform into Super Saiyans. Goku and Vegeta are left completely dumbfounded, wondering how these ordinary soldiers can be Super Saiyans. One of the soldiers, impatient, decides to attack first. He flies towards Vegeta and throws a punch at his face. 
But to the soldier's dismay, his companion's shock, his hand breaks upon impact with Vegeta's body. Vegeta becomes very angry that this worm dared to touch him like that. As he releases his power, causing everyone around him to be blown away, he yells at them not to think too highly of themselves, just because they can transform into Super Saiyans. After being thrown away by Vegeta's mere energy release, the Saiyan soldiers are lying on the ground, surprised by the power this man is showing. But then they notice the arrival of someone else. Approaching from behind, Goku and Vegeta telling them to leave his men alone. As they turn to see who it is, they're shocked. It's Bardock, referred to by the soldiers simply as General. General Bardock tells his men not to worry and that he will take care of these two invaders, and so he transforms into Super Saiyan 2. This also surprises Goku and Vegeta, as Goku extends his hand out towards his father in a pacifying gesture. Bardock, the Saiyan general, unleashes a powerful wave of energy towards them. After the clash of their attacks, Goku and Vegeta are transported into a very strange world, where planet Vegeta was not destroyed. Will they be able to convince Bardock and the other Saiyans of their innocence? Will they discover why the Saiyans in this reality are so powerful? Will Beerus and Whis go after them to find out more. Find out in the next episodes of Dragon Ball Shinken.